What's up, everybody? Andrew Mahone here with Tricky Jim at Full Grip Games. We've got a very exciting event going on this evening, and I am uh, just getting everything set up. I believe this is the latest that I've ever started a stream. It's midnight, and that means it is time for Unified Minds. We're going to be hosting a pre-release here at Full Grip Games. I've got Brady Botner on board. What's up, Brady? Come on. What's up? Yeah. Hello. Yeah, I got Brady here. I also got Natalie. Hello. We are going to be streaming uh, the Unified Minds pre-release here, so we're getting started. Brady, you got your you got your thing right here. Let's let's, let's get the party started. All right, Brady. So I uh, am still working on getting all of this uh, squared away, but this should be appropriate. That look good, good to you, Brady. Yeah, all right, hard. let's get all let's right. get Brady here, ready to open his kit now, Brady. Walk us through your Unified Minds kit. What are you looking for? What are you most excited about? Um, I'm mostly looking for Immune Mewtwo, because that is the best card in the set. And then like other like uncommon playables and stuff, like Reset Stamp, Cherish Ball. Uh, as far as what's good for the pre-release, I'm not really sure. Um, oh, actually, Zerka Tree. Zerka Tree is what I'm looking for, if, if I want to win this. Yeah. If you want to win this thing, <laughs> uh -huh. and you do. Right. Okay. So Zerka Tree is apparently good. That Terrakian seems Terrakian. busted. Uh, yeah, it seems cool. I'm not sure how good it is in pre-release because there's no like Spiritomb to damage on your bench, but it, I think it's like a pretty cool card, just generally speaking. Yeah, what does it do? Read it to us. So, um, for fighting Colorless Colorless, it does uh, 50 plus if all of your bitch Pokemon have at least one damage counter on them, the attack does 150 more damage, so 200 total. And then for fighting fighting Colorless Colorless, it uh, does 110. Sick. Yep. So we'll see what's in the uh, evolution kit here. Rackian Recycle Energy, that's pretty cool. And try to keep the cards like, yeah, yeah, yeah right in the yeah, middle. Of the sure. Yeah, yeah, sick. Okay. Uh, Looker, Blues Tactics, I think that's a pretty cool card. Yeah, Hiker. especially for pre release. Chip Chip Ice Axe, Necrozma, Cubo, Cubo. Oh, it's, yo, this Marowak is gassed. All right. <laughs> Read us the Marowak right here. All right, so the Marowak for uh, no energy, you discard the top card of your opponent's deck. And if the discarded card is a Pokemon, this attack does damage equal to that Pokemon's HP to your opponent's active Pokemon. Oh, and so okay. So you got uh, Hiker and Chip Chip Ice Axe to look at their top deck. And oh my gosh. Yeah. And then like <laughs> stack their deck. That's so sick. <laughs> and then go in. Green, Cynthia. A lot of really cool just consistency supporters in here. You got the uh, Karate Belt. It makes powering up the Terrakian attacks easier. For sure. Tauros has the Call for Family attack, which is always really good in pre-release formats. Yep. Uh, especially for a colorless. Um, Meditite and Medicham. I haven't seen this Medicham before. Let's see. Uh, put four damage counters on your opponent's Pokemon in any way you like. That's okay. Uh, for two fighting, uh, this Pokemon has a Karate Belt attached to it. This attack does 60 more damage. And there's two Karate Belts. That's pretty cool. Insane. All right. So uh, I'll open the first pet. Finneon, Alolan Grimer, Carablast, Fletchling, Honage, Ooh. Thunderous. Let's see what he does. Double Carless, if Tornadus is on your bench, this attack does 50 more damage. Okay, we've got to find a Tornadus thing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Raging Thunder for Lightning, Lightning, Colorless, 120, and then 40 to one of your bench Pokemon. Oh, that's dangerous. <laughs> uh, <laughs> snow. Oh, Reset Stamp, that's pretty cool. Reset stamp, and you got and a uh, you could turn one reset stamp your opponent to four, right? Yeah, that's pretty gas. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Pack number two. And the Heracross could be good. I mean, you got some fighting Pokemon. I don't know. Right. Even though it looks like it it's costs all colorless for its attacks. Yeah. yeah. Also good, though. Right. Uh, so you got a Fungus, Honage, Magnemite, Fletchling, Onyx, Pikachu, Unpheasant. Psychic energy. Oh, Normalium Z with tackle. All right, dude, gotta find, a, be gotta find a tackle Pokemon. <laughs> <laughs> looking to and see if any of these dudes cool. got tackle. Alright. <laughs> uh, Suwaddle. Not, not a Pokemon I'm familiar with. <laughs> Badoof. <laughs> Scorpy. One pod. Fake Pokemon <clears throat> fan. <laughs> <laughs> no, I bet. Oh, Pokemaniac. That's probably pretty good in pre release. Because. I mean, there's definitely going to be multiple types in here. For sure. Oh, wait, no, it's the, oh. 
What is I was thinking of the do? it's the it's the four retreat cost thing. It's actually probably terrible. Uh, oh, okay. I was thinking it was the one that finds three <laughs> Pokemon that are different types. Ah, uh, okay. Uh, Tapu Fini. So that's pretty, oh, sick. That's pretty sick. You know. Probably won't make it into this deck, but dude, uh, Misty's request. Let's go. That uh, that's probably pretty good and pretty least. Misty's just to find favorite. All my other stuff. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, Noctowl. Let's see. Sixty damage to one of your opponent's Pokemon that has any damage counters on it. Hmm. That might be okay. Uh, Tranquil. And then last pack. Uh, slack off. Axu, Fletchinger, Stuntfisk. This is pretty cool. I'll probably play it in since I have Fighting Energy. Uh, Onyx, Magmar, Archeops, Kamala, Pokemon Research Lab. That's cool. Uh, and Lumineon. Sick. Sick. So, uh, yeah. Um, what is uh, What are your initial impressions about the deck you think you're going to build? Uh, probably just something with Fighting. Uh, energies. I probably won't play this. Oh, let's, let's see, what's this first attack do? During your opponent's next turn, this Pokemon takes 30 less damage. Yeah, I probably don't want to play Psychic Energies just to use his second attack. So I'll probably just focus on only fighting since Marowak's first attack is for just colorless. Sounds good. So, All right. I'll let you uh, build your deck off camera, and then sure. we're going to get Natalie over here Sounds good. to see what she pulls in her pre-release kit. All right, Natalie. You think you can uh, beat Brady's pulls here? Uh, we'll see, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. Very good. Okay, here okay. we go. All right. Let's see. I want the Tapu Fini promo. I was just talking about it. Brady, you got the Terrakian? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Brady said he wanted the Terrakian. <laughs> I want the Tapu, tapu Fini. Who are the promos? Right. There's like Amoongus. Amoongus, Tapu Fini, uh, Terrakian, and Necrozma. And the Tapu Fini is the good one, I got, right? I got Amoongus. Yeah, Tapu Fini. Amoongus, um, Amoongus is okay. Amoongus is sick. Yeah. But it does something if you put a Pokemon with Spore into play, right? Yeah, um, if you put a Pokemon that has a Spore attack from your hand, or if you pl whenever you play a Pokemon that has a Spore attack from your hand during your turn, you may leave your opponent's active asleep and poison. Oh, so. Insane in pre-release Pretty cool. Format. That's pretty good in pre-release format. I, Hopefully I get another one of those. I bet you, like, there's a bunch of Fungus and Amoongus in that. Oh, in let's that. hope there is. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> all right. Your opponent's going to be sleeping all let's day. Let's take a look here. Move this out of the way. So we got the Amoongus, uh, Professor Elm, Blue's Tactics. That's pretty cool. It's kind of like a beach for a supporter, tropical beach for a supporter. Um, How, Pokemon Communication. Here's the Shroomish. A Breloom. We got Breloom in the kit. That's Dude. insane. Three and Fungus. And it knows four. And it knows four. Yeah, they all know four. And then two Amoongus. Oh, insane deck. Insane. insane deck. Green's Exploration, Copycat, another blue, Karate Belt. If you have more prize cards remaining than your opponent, this attacks with this Pokemon, this card attack too. This, oh, cost Fighting Lost. Okay, that's cool. Um, two Karate Belt, a Tauros. That's a call for family attack. Three Metatite and two Metacham. It does. Pure power, put four damage counters on your opponent's Pokemon in any way you like, and then Master Strike. If this Pokemon has a Karate Belt attached to it, it's like 60 more damage. Oh, that's pretty cool. All right, this is, I like the pre-release kits. They do, or they do a pretty good job of, like, giving you, you know, enough consistency cards to build a, a reasonable deck. For sure. All right. Let me move these out of the way a little bit. All right, here we go. Fletchinder. Stunfisk. Onyx. Finneon, Alolan Grimer, I like his artwork. Relicanth, Hoopa, oh yeah, this card is pretty good. Um, does 10 more damage for each of your opponent, or does 20 more damage for each of your opponent's Pokemon that have an ability. That's pretty good. Metal Energy, Oranguru, Lorantis, and Mesprit. Oop, a code. Just have a code. Oh, yeah, yep. yeah, that one's a. It was upside down, I think. That yeah. one's out there. Have a code. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Salandit, Gibble, Sawaddle. I can't believe you're not familiar with Sawaddle, Brady. He's cute. Vidu, <laughs> Scroofy, uh, nice Pikachu, Scrafty, Water Energy, Pukumuku, Archin, Yanmega. All right, is the code going to get me this time? No. Salandit, Scraggy, Tynamo, Cubone, Dredagon, Silvali. Stack is 50 more damage to each prize card your opponent took on their last turn. Okay. Salazzle, Magneton, B Barrel, and Dewblade. Sick. Right, let's go. Last pack. Final pack. Oh, I got something. Let's go. Okay. Hanage, uh, Sneasel, Magnemite, Slackoff, Axew, Meditate, 
Dragonite GX. Dude. Uh, mock delivery. You may discard any number of cards from your hand until you have and draw till you have, or until you have nine or fewer. Draw cards until you have ten cards in your hand. Okay, it's pretty cool. And does two seventy for five energy. Six five two seventy. Six five two seventy. <laughs> Lapras, Karate Belt, and Grimsley. All right, that's pretty cool. I think I'm gonna be going with Ooh. the. Uh, the Amoongus Let me special. See that, uh, Dragonite oh, you, GX. You see the Dragonite? Dude, first GX pull of yeah, Unified Minds. Check use that it, out. Here, you got it. It's insane. Yeah. Can we get him focused? There we go. Yeah, I got it in focus. Check. That's all right. He's very, very that handsome. Check out. Dragonite GX hype. Let's go, chat. <laughs> that go, is chat. Uh, pretty exciting for sure. All right. All right. Sick. Well, thank you, Natalie. No problem. For Let's go, my Amoongus deck. Yes. Excellent. Right. Brady, do you got energy over there? All right, we're good to get the energy. <laughs> Let's see. So I actually am like super jelly. I actually have to like manually focus this camera because it's like my DSLR. So that's just like the way that works. So you guys have noticed me like standing up and doing all this. I, I actually want to get me a. I want to get me a pre-release kit. All right, I'm gonna be right back. I'm gonna get me a pre-release kit. I tried to commandeer myself a pre-release kit, but. Uh, was a no-go. We had 36 players show up, so we are we are short on supplies. So that was a that was a no-go from Sean. But it's all good. I I have a little bit of FOMO right now, but it's uh it's all well and good. We're gonna bring Brady over. He actually is very close to completing his deck. Brady, uh, what kind of what kind of deck you got over there? You just got uh, some fighting. All right, well, I'm going to have you take a seat and then show off the deck that you have built. All right, lay it out for us, Brady. Sure. So we got uh, 10 fighting energy. Then we got the two karate belts. Uh, Kahili, Cynthia, Green's Exploration, Chip Chip Ice Axe, Looker, Blue's Tactics, Hiker, Reset Stamp. Stunfisk, Cycle Energy, Missy's Favor, Hapu, and then Terrakian. And we're going to play this because the uh, hair cross knows tackle. <laughs> so we're going to see if we can pull that off. Uh, Dude, <laughs> let's go! <laughs> we got a 3 2 Metacham line and then a 3 2 Cubone line. All right, now who do you think is going to be like the the best attacker in your deck? And for everybody at home who may not know, in pre release, you build a 40 card deck and you play with. Four prizes. So a smaller deck here. Who are you thinking you're going to lean on to be the backbone of your deck here, Brady? Um, I'm not sure that it's the best attacker. In fact, it's probably the worst, but I'm going to try to attack the most with the Alolan Mayor. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, because it's insane. If you, yeah, it's like, so cool. <laughs> if you hit a Pokemon like Metacham, you just hit do one t right. 110 for exactly. free. Yeah. Absolutely. So cool. I'll insane. just keep attacking with him. I'll load up my Heracross on the bench and then uh, do the GX attack. <laughs> that sounds pretty busted, to be honest, yeah. because you got uh, all these... You know, Hiker, Chip Chip Ice Axe, and not to mention pre-releases are just full of Pokemon. So you right. could just, yeah, like, like, half of my cards right now are Pokemon. So like. <laughs> I'd say that Alola Marowak has a pretty decent shot at, uh, at hitting that. Excellent yep. stuff. All right, well, I heard they need help out front building decks, Brady. So uh, right. we'll uh, send you out front to help out our league goers. Sounds good. And then uh, I'm gonna get Natalie back I'm here. Still going. Hold up. Yeah, 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 Natalie back here shortly. All right, that was pretty sick though. Uh, I am definitely, definitely feeling a little FOMO trying to get uh, my hands on some Unified Minds cards as soon as possible as well. Watching Natalie rip that Dragonite GX was definitely really exciting. That card is really cool. There's a lot of different ways that Dragonite GX could get played potentially uh, you can play it with triple acceleration energy you can play it with lance prism star is another way to get the dragonite into play there's another non-gx dragonite from unified minds that accelerates lightning and water energies into play so you can play it with that dragonite to get energy onto it you could also just discard the dragonite and copy its attack does 270 damage with Mewtwo and Mew Tag Team GX is another way that uh, some people are playing it. Some people are playing it with Welder, the Welder engine. You can use Welder, Mewtwo, and Mew with triple acceleration energy. So the Dragonite GX, definitely an unexplored option 
that uh, has presented itself from Unified Minds. I have not tried it out yet, but I'm definitely excited to. Unfortunately, Natalie, I don't think you got a whole Dragonite line. I did not. I actually pretty much didn't get anything besides the pre-release kit. Oh, uh, okay, yeah. That happens sometimes. At That's the okay. pre-release, you get... Uh, you do get the four packs and the promo kit to build your deck, and then every player gets an additional two packs after the pre-release as a kind of bonus. So six packs are guaranteed in total, and then the top finishers get bonus packs on top of that based on their finishings. Tonight's pre-release at Full Grip Games is only $20, so... Uh, definitely a great deal. One of the cheapest pre-releases I've ever seen, so I'm really stoked about that. And uh, we have what I think is like a record turnout for us. 36 players at this pre-release tonight at midnight. We were definitely not expecting this blowout turnout at our midnight pre-release, but I am really, really stoked to get into these games and see what kind of strategies reveal themselves as being the top strategies for players in this uh, in this sealed format. Uh, the sealed Pokemon formats are always a lot of fun. Last uh, set, the Unbroken Bonds pre-release, we saw a lot of kind of unsung heroes uh, make their way to the forefront. I mean, there was the Sea King that was just like incredible. There was, a, uh, I think, a Lucario uh, with like a standalone attack or something like that that was like really strong as well. Uh, a couple formats ago or a couple sets ago, there was the Swampert. The Swampert, I think from Team Up, was so insane and absolutely dominated every single match that I saw. We're gonna get Natalie in here. All right, Natalie, let's go. Show us your deck. All right, we got the pre-release kit special for sure. Um, I put the Hoop Guy in. Uh, I figure Ooh. there's... There's going to be, like, enough abilities that this might be useful. It does only attack for one colorless, so it's not, like, a big deal. Um, I have the two Metacham, the, uh, a 4-2 Metacham line. I have, like, a Pokemon Communication, so I want to make sure that I have, like, enough to be able to get the Spore guys down for Amoongus. Um, I have the 1-1 one, one Breloom line. I didn't get another Shroomish or Breloom, um, and I have a 3-3 three, three Amoongus. I also didn't get any more of those. Um, I would have liked a fourth Fungus, because that way, because it knows Spore. Um... I also put the Tauros in, it calls for family, it does 60 damage for colorless, not too bad. Um, and then I have Professor Elm, three karate belts, uh, Pokemon communication, how, two blues, a copycat, um, and a greens. And I'm gonna do, uh, I have my energy over there, I don't wanna take too long, but I think um, nine and five, nine fighting, five grass, probably what I'm gonna do. Sounds good, now who do you expect to be like the main star of your pre-release. There's always one. Probably the Amoongus. Um, if the opponent's actually Pokemon, yeah, it does 90 damage if they're poisoned. So if you're able to like play the Spore guy down and poison them, it does 90. And they stay if they stay asleep, you know, they're not going to be attacking, even if you don't one-shot them. The Matt Champ's pretty good, too. I have these three Karate Belts. I'm not sure if I'll be able to take advantage of these at all, but I didn't think I needed that many energy because they all attack for one or two energy. So I wanted That's to make awesome. some room for some more guys. For sure, they could definitely create some swing turns if you happen to be behind on prizes which is really cool and uh and yeah i don't think there's actually like really any switch guards in this sealed format i there's don't think U -turn so turn board which yeah. gives you less retreat but other than that no real switch options to get out of sleep and poison so that could definitely be strong there's a uh, thank you blizzy memes um there's a lot of um there are a lot of like uncommons in this set that aren't trainers i was noticing and like not a lot of people are getting trainers so, like, right. I didn't really get anything else to put in the deck. Um, I think we're good to go. I should go help some people. Sounds good. Yeah. All right, we're going to let you go. Thank you so much, Thank Natalie, you. for joining us and uh, showing us your deck. Thank you to Blizzy Memes for those 100 bits. Thank you guys all for joining us for the Unified Minds pre-release as well. Make sure to check out FullGripGames.com where you can pre-order singles from Unified Minds. Got those pre-orders live on FullGripGames.com now. And thank you so much, everyone, for being here. Make sure to give the channel a follow. We are cruising over 5,000 followers here on Tricky Gym, so really stoked about that as well. We are over 5,100. Oh, what's going on with my Pikachu? He's gigantic, but thank you so much. Revenge4579 for the Twitch Prime sub. Appreciate it. Thanks for that. Awesome misbehaving Pikachu. I don't know why it's so large, but uh, we'll figure it out. Anyways, 
the tournament table. Look how crazy. I, I'll show you. Just full disclosure. Look how crazy this setup looks right now. That camera is crooked as what? All right. That camera is not even remotely straight. So I need to go and fix that camera before gameplay starts. So we're going to be right back while I fix that mess over there. And then uh, we'll, we'll be getting into some gameplays here shortly. So we'll be right back. We've got Jesse Parker What's here up, to show off his deck yes. that he built for the pre-release. I'm gonna let you go ahead and sit in the hot seat sure. here. And uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's see, where is that? Boom, all right, go ahead and show off your deck. All right, so we have got ourselves a uh, evolution pack special here. So I pretty much pulled nothing out of my packs. So uh, we're just gonna go ahead and play what they gave us in the pre-release kit. I did get a 1-1-1 Aegis Slash line, but the attack on it is really bad. Um, it does an attack for, it does 10 plus 10 for each item in your discard pile. Um, and there's just no consistent way of getting items in your discard pile in pre-release, so I can't really play it. So we're just playing this. It plays a 3-2 uh, Frostlast. Frostlast's attack does 20. Uh, so it's you put up to seven damage counters on this Pokemon, and it does 20 for each damage counter. So you can do like 140 right off the bat for one energy. Seems pretty good. Um, and then it plays, let's see, where is it? Oh, yes. The Cubone Marowak. Um, well, I thought this was organized. I guess not. <laughs> All right, there we go. Uh, I came with a 3-2. I got one Marowak out of the pack, so I played it in there. Uh, its attack is pretty crazy. <laughs> Seems like fun. Uh, Spirit Smash. Discard the top card of your opponent's deck. If the card you discarded is a Pokemon, this attack does damage equal to that Pokemon's HP. So you discard the top card of their deck. If it's like the Pokemon has like 70 HP, you do 70 damage. Its attack's decent too. Two Psychic, 60 damage. Not bad. Uh, and then I did pull an Azelf, so kind of like Mew, it has Psy Power. Um, put three damage counters on your opponent's Pokemon in any way you like, which is pretty good in pre-release format because you can just uh, put three, you can't obviously Guzma or Gust anything, so you just, if something's three damage counters away or one damage counter away, you can snipe it, so pretty good card there. And then Audino, uh, its ability lets you draw one while it's in your active position each turn, so pretty good. Has a vanilla attack, heals 30 damage, pretty bulky guy for pre-release. Recycle Energy, and also I did pull probably the best, um, what do you want to say, pre-release promo in Necrozma. Uh, so it has that special laser attack for three, for two Psychic and a Colorless. It does 100 plus 60 more if you have a special energy attached, and it has the one Recycle Energy. So assuming you get that attack, you can just start hitting for 160 every turn, but it's just a pretty bulky Pokemon, good basic. And then it plays just a bunch of you know, random supporters you get. You get Cynthia's, ooh, pretty cool. A uh, bunch of psychics, not like five, like five waters. So yeah, pretty basic, pretty standard list. So hopefully we can at least get some wins, get some bonus packs, that'd be cool. Good stuff. Uh, yeah. Now, Jesse, who do you think is going to be the all-star of your deck? Oh, uh, probably either Azelf or Necrozma. Uh, so Necrozma here. Uh, yeah, so this seems really good. Like, if you can just get two energies on it right off the bat, it does 30 damage, and then you reduce 30 damage, which might, might not sound like a lot, but in pre-release format, it's actually pretty huge. And 130 HP is quite a lot. Um, but if I can get three energies on this quick, like maybe have it sitting on the bench, get three energies and recycle energy on it, you can just sweep their whole board. So hopefully that can carry me, as well as Azel being able to snipe 30 wherever I want. But, um, yeah, and... Uh, Frostlast is pretty good too, but I'm I really thinking like that Audino you got in there. Yeah, the Audino, yeah. So, so cool. Yeah, if if you start this, it's insane. You just draw milk, go through your whole deck. Uh, right. You do want to be a little careful though with your deck being 40 cards. You don't want to, um, you know, mill your deck. But it seems pretty good. Yeah. So uh, for yeah, sure, this is definitely the all star though. Awesome. Well, thank yeah. you, Jesse, for showing us your deck, yeah. and uh, definitely good luck at the pre-release. Thanks. I'll yeah. be checking in to see. How you do. Oh, yeah, for sure. All right, we're going to see if we have time for maybe one more deck preview before we get into games. Also, I am almost there. Not with that. I'm almost there with my tournament. Look, I did better. It's straighter than it was. But still, uh, yeah, no dice on the whole tournament table thing. So I got to go try to fix that. I'll see if I can get one more player to show off their deck. Skamajama! Thank you so much, Skamajama, 
for that sub. Four months on board. You rock, Skamajama. All right. We're going to be right back. See if I can maybe get... Uh, I saw Barlow pulled a GX. I saw Nick Moses pulled a Caldeo GX. We'll see. Yo, what's up? All right. I got Andrew Barlow <laughs> back here. Andrew built a silly deck. Andrew, come on. Come All on, right. take a seat. Take a seat in the hot seat. All and right. then we're going to lay your deck out right here <laughs> and uh, tell the people a little bit about what you got going on. All right. Basically, all I've got is a Lola Executor and Rowlet. Jeez. Now, tell us about what this card does. Well, its first attack in this deck isn't doesn't do much, <laughs> but it lets you auto-evolve to a stage two for any grass Pokemon on your bench. Sure. Seems pretty good. And then what are those other two attacks? Calming, calming Hurricane, which is 150, and heal 30. Pretty good. And then uh, it's GX attack? It uh, It's for three grass, it'll do 200. And if you have three extra energy, they shuffle all their energy back into the deck. Dude, sick card. We're just going to take a minute to show that off. <laughs> Check that out. Beautiful. Let's see, where's the focus at? <laughs> oh, yeah. Insano card. All right, this glare is hitting really bad. All right, we're gonna yeah. kind of focus in on it, and then uh, really, really show that card <laughs> off. That is uh, in all its glory. Rowlet and Executor Tag Team GX. Thank you so much, Zach Praz, cheering for your deck right now. A <laughs> hundred bits. Thank you so much, all right. Zach Pra. All right. So we've got that now. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about what you paired your Rowlet and Alolan Executor with. All right. Probably the best three cards outside of this is Reset Stamp, because everyone's starting off on four prizes. Everyone knows how everyone loves Marshadow. Right. Turn one Marshadow on their side is pretty good. Busted. And if I can pair it up with a Hiker or a Chip Chip High Sacks, right. they, they're not drawing anything. Can't lose. And then I got supporters to hopefully try to find those. Yep. And then now, they, Andrew... Where are the other Pokemon in your deck? <laughs> they do not exist. What? W you're just playing one Pokemon? Yeah. Well, I suppose if it does go down, that is yep. three of your prize cards. Yes. Did you pull any other Pokemon that you thought you might want to pair with your Rowlet and Alolan Executor tag team? Not really, no. Did you pull any other Grass Pokemon? No. Okay. Or, well, I pulled Levani, which would have been really good because it's 40 less damage to all your Grass Pokemon. Uh-huh. But I did not pull the middle evolution. All right. And then, so, yeah. do you think your Rallet and Alolan Executor can carry you there? I think it can, because the big thing is it has healing on it. And there's a lot of low damage attacks. For sure. All right. So, good luck, Barlow. Thank you for showing us your Rallet and Alolan Executor deck. All right. Thank I'll you for having me. I'll be checking in with you to see how that strategy, that bold strategy, works out for you All right. uh, later on in the, uh, in the tournament. Good stuff. All right, we're almost focused. It's a little tough focusing in and out. It's all good. We're, uh, you know, it's it's a work in progress. We're getting there. The Rowlet and Alolan Executor deck. Pretty sure he's playing like, he's playing like 30 energy in that deck. It's absolutely insane. All right, I got round one going up. We are actually going to have to take one more shot at getting the tournament table strained out it's almost look at it it's, it's almost there not quite so i'm going to go straighten that out then we're going to get round one up and rocking here so stay tuned for round one of the full grip games unified minds pre-release round one of the full grip games unified minds pre-release is ready to go let's get excited chat for frank persick versus cody Gray, I do not know what these players' decks have in store for us, but it should definitely be an exciting match. Uh, excuse me as I move my microphone around. All right, there we go. Excellent. Get reorganized here. Excellent stuff. I am uh, excited to see what kind of strategies make their selves known, make themselves known as the best strategies in this tournament. Oh my gosh, is that a... Oh, it is. It's a Garchomp and Giratina Tag Team GX. Absolutely wild there. And it looks like that might be the only Pokemon in 
Cody's deck, which would be totally wild. I see a hand just full of energy. He may play some other Pokemon, but that Garchomp and Giratina is an absolute all-star in this pre-release format. With that linear attack, it can do 40 damage to one of Frank's Pokemon for just one energy. That is so strong, absolutely insane. And then Cody with the Hiker and Alolan Marowak sleeves as well is really sweet because as we saw, Hiker and Alolan Marowak both are included in these pre-release kits that we've been seeing. So that is going to be very strong. Now, excuse me as we work through this uh, this pre-release together. I don't actually know a lot of the finer details. Wow, and no way, he's got the hiker turn one, Cody Gray, with the hiker sleeves. Insane, and then uh, as well, Garchomp and Giratina, if you can pull off that GG and GX attack, would be totally insane. So Cody choosing the top card of Frank's deck, trying to get him into what would appear to be a dead draw situation there. And gonna take out that Lonely Fungus on Frank's bench. Turn one, pretty substantial turn there. Frank definitely on the back foot as he proceeds forward with Pokemon communication, trying to Get something out of his deck that isn't going to be immediately immediately ran over by this Garchomp and Giratina GX. Good point in the chat. If Frank can actually stabilize and get some Amoongus online, he should be in a pretty good spot because he's going to be able to put this Garchomp and Giratina GX to sleep. He's going to be able to poison it as well with the Amoongus's ability but if frank can't get pokemon out with bigger hit points it looks like frank may also have i think i see a gx in his hand frank may also have a gx at his disposal and it looks to me like it might be garchomp and giratina gx as well it looks like he's choosing between that and the marowak it could be a risky play for frank not to get his own Garchomp and Giratina GX. And Frank will evolve, attach his energy to the Alola Marowak and use his own Chip Chip Ice Axe. And it's just three energy. There is no other Pokemon in Cody's deck. He's playing the single GX attack. Uh, the single GX deck, as we saw. And I think Frank may end up getting punished here by not choosing to get his own GX out of the deck. It's only a matter of a couple of turns and we see that Cody does play multiple different types of energy. If Frank doesn't draw out of it here, he is about to get Calamitous slashed for game, but I don't think he has anything and he has to extend the hand, that's it. And Cody showing off that his deck is literally just a Garchomp and Tina deck. That is it. So, insane play from Cody Gray there, coming out on top with the win, with his Garchomp Giratina deck, and just some fighting energy and some psychic energy. And that's all. See if Cody wants to come back and talk to us a little bit about his pulls and why he decided to go with just the single tag team GX strategy in this pre-release. Here with Cody Gray, hot off his round one win at the Unified Minds pre-release. So tell us a little bit about your uh, deck there, Cody. Uh, it's uh, <laughs> one Pokemon, a Hiker, and 38 Energies. For real? Yeah. So the Hiker, <laughs> you started your hand with the Hiker and the Pokemon, and there are just 38 other energy in it. Yeah. Okay, now how do you think this bold strategy is gonna pay off for you at the Unified Minds pre-release? I hope well. Uh, <laughs> I don't. I, don't, I try not to like do these kind of decks, but I saw its first attack, and I was like, I might as well just do it. Like, there's no point playing anything else. 
I mean, honestly, if you're trying to build the ultimate strategy for a pre-release, that's pretty much it. Uh, one attack, one energy attachment for 40 damage is just really strong. So yeah. you got the turn one knockout on a Fungus. Yeah, but with them being at 40 HP, it just makes it a lot better. For it's, sure. It's just easy free prizes super early. Now, was it coincidence? Let me see your, uh, your if you don't mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a coincidence that you have the hiker sleeves and then one of hyper hiker in your well, deck. I bought these like an hour before the pre-release started. I had no idea there were hikers in the pre-release kits, uh -huh. so it was just completely coincidence. Oh, that's so funny. I didn't even think about it until I opened with it in my hand and I was looking at the sleeves and I saw that, it, oh, it's like, oh, that's pretty funny. And then what's funny too is that the uh, there's an Alola Marowak in the pre-release kit, so I thought maybe you had pulled an Alola Marowak and a hiker well, I did and pull then the went Marowaks. over and bought yeah. the sleeves. <laughs> well, no, I bought them before, but I, I saw the Marowaks and I was like, I'm going to play them and everything because that would be funny with the sleeves and then I just right. didn't. Awesome stuff. Well, cool stuff, Cody. Uh, congrats on your sweet pull. Did you pull anything else in your pre-release kit? I got the uh, the Tyranitar Sableye. No way! Yeah. So your pre-release kit was just loaded. Right. I saw a lot of them were loaded, though. I noticed that oh like, my gosh. everyone around me was getting at least one, if not two, hits out of their kits. What? Oh, man. I wish we'd had you open yours on camera. That would have been <laughs> sick. Awesome. Well, uh, good stuff. Glad to hear you got some good pulls. Good luck in the rest of your matches. Thanks. Got Frank Persick here. Uh, hot off his round one loss, unfortunately. Hey, what up, man? <laughs> yeah, but uh, anyways, good sport. Decided to come back. Thank you so much, Frank, for joining us here. Yeah, of course. And uh, how did your pulls go for the Unified um, Minds pre-release? Yeah, it was all right. I got that uh, Garchomp, Giratina, Tag Team, GX. Very cool. And um, all other cards. I got some, <laughs> some other stuff. Yeah, some other things. Yeah. Uh, yeah, no, I uh, I played a deck that we'll probably, I'm sure, see a lot of today, which is the Amoongus deck. There's like a, a Lowen Marowak is in there. Psychic Sola. fighting guys. <laughs> Thought it fit really good with my GX boy. Right. Saw so swinging a miss with the Alola Marowak's attack there. Yeah, Looking well, I didn't realize what my <laughs> opponent was only playing the gear. I'm like, I thought about it too. I was like, I could play this with 39 energy. I'm like, that won't work. That won't be. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I had, you know, Pokecon. I had like, all this stuff to search for. Like, I was like, yeah. My deck's consistent. Yeah, I'm like, yeah, I'll get Got supporters. <laughs> Never mind. Yeah. No, um,. <laughs> Yeah, no, it's, uh, I got some other things. There was, like, uh, that new Necrozma, and there's, like, uh, special energy, Sweet. recycler energies. Really right, good. yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, but, yeah, no, just unfortunately, just uh, was not in the the cards there. My yeah. opponent, he won the coin flip. He's like, I'll go second. I'm like, this can't be good. No. <laughs> <laughs> like, this, <laughs> I was like, huh. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I see that strategy paid off for him, getting the turn one linear attack there. Yeah, uh, yeah. I, I was really, because I figured, I'm like, this might be, I look, in my mind, I was like, this might be turn one linear attack. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, probably not, but, you know. What and, else could it be, yeah. Yeah, and I, I you know, was hoping, I'm like, please let me start mine so I can attack first. Um, but no, it didn't. It didn't now, what, uh, what cards are you the most excited about from Unified Minds? Oh, man, that's a, that's a heater of a question. Yeah, it's I, a uh, crazy set. It's a crazy set. Uh, I think I'm most excited about the uh, that Mew Mewtwo GX. I think... Uh, in a vacuum, it's an okay card, uh, but overall, it's just all, especially in Expanded, with all of the uh, insane combinations of different GX and EX Pokemon that you can play in your deck, uh, I think it's probably will end up being one of the best cards ever printed. For sure. And I think what's crazy about this set, too, is that, uh, you know, they're almost printing with old cards in mind. They're printing EX you know, conditions onto these yeah, new cards. Yeah, cards where there's no EXs in standard. I right. think that's, that's kind of nice. It is nice because we saw, like, even just a couple years ago with Bridget, like, they didn't yeah. take that into consideration. They didn't take that into consideration, never arrived it, never fixed it. So now it's like, okay, uh, EXs and GXs obviously have pretty similar power levels. GX is kind of running away with it yeah, now, yeah. but, you know, uh, similar. And it's nice to see both EXs and GXs get involved because it makes Expanded a lot more fun, I think. I, I agree. I definitely agree. And I, I think that is kind of Pokemon learning from, you know, the interactions with their cards when they print this new mechanic and their broken combinations like Bridget for three GXs. It's right. like, okay, you know, in the future we should probably, uh, you know, notify Take that. Expanded in mind, you know. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So are there any uh, any decks that you're excited to play from Unified Minds, cards that are included, things Ooh. like that? Um. I, I was experimenting for a long time with the new BHM card Okay. that you can attach for three colorless, which is a, just a triple colorless energy away from an attack. Uh, item lock. Item right? lock your opponent, throw it back in the deck, and send up whatever you want. So yeah. I think uh, 
I tried it out uh, in the standard format, um, and it was okay. And I think I think that'll be a really good card once again, like when expanded rolls around. I think that's uh, that's such a great mechanic of being able to just continually use those triple accelerated without actually having to discard them due to the conditions of the attack. Right. And uh, locking your opponent out items has always been uh, pretty okay, I think. For sure, and you can combo that with all sorts of different kinds of walls. And in expanded, you have. Uh, you know, more options as to the exactly. kind of things you can wall with. So, uh, you know, potentially, and float stone. Yeah, yeah, float, <laughs> float stone is pretty good. <laughs> and, and, and just float stone. <laughs> Yeah, for uh, sure. Awesome stuff, Frank. Well, better luck in your next couple of rounds. And yeah, thanks, for, uh, man. Hopefully uh, it's a little more exciting. Yeah, yeah. yeah for right. sure. How did your round one go? It went well. I played against Dana, a local from the shop here. Dana said he pulled a Mega Sableye and Tyranitar he DX. He did. He was telling me that, and I was like, ooh, I don't know about that. I have yeah, right. for weakness, but that's a lot of HP. But and he wasn't playing it. He said he got no uh, okay. We were playing in a Moongus mirror match. Um, <laughs> except for he had the Frost Lass that does like damage based on how many damage counters you put on. Right. Um, and I went first, and I was able to like Moongus him two turns in a row for a knockout. Like two, Starting turn two, I had two Fungus. And then, um, and then he got me with his Fungus, and I had to like retreat and hit him for 40 with Metatite, which yeah. is actually really good. It's 40 damage, and you can't use it on that Pokemon that turn, so you just retreat between Metatites and do a bunch of oh, 40 that's crazy. damage. I had four Metatites, so I just kept benching them and using them. Um, and uh, at the end, like Dana couldn't get any more Fungus down, and I was just like able to take knockouts with Metatite, just poke around until I... Like, now, that's not even Metacham. It's, no, you're the, talking the little one, Metatite. Metatite. Yeah, he does uh, like... 40 damage, and you can't use the attack the next turn on that Pokemon. Wait, so he can't see. use it? Yeah, he can't use it, but you can return to the other meta Titan and do it. Dude, you got this Tauros in here, too. I got the Tauros. Too. He's not useful. Dude, Tauros... I love the artwork on this Tauros, though. He's, yeah, he's very he handsome. He is very handsome. I love um, that. But... So yeah, that that went well. Uh, the Amoongi Smear match definitely a little funny. Meta type. Who, who wakes up if you don't get to one hit KO it? This is actually an insane. It's an insane pre-release card. card for oh sure. Oh my gosh! Yeah, let's show off this uh, this guy real quick. Okay, can All you, right. Can you show him? Oh, I'm gonna make it work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. <laughs> there he is. All right. He's got an attack. Spirited headbutt does 40 damage. And you can't use it next turn. On this this Pokemon. On this Pokemon, right, right, right. But you just retreat and then you, you yeah, keep doing it. Just so keep doing it. So that's uh that's awesome. We're yeah, gonna, I definitely. Let's see, get it. Uh, ah. Definitely didn't get too many spore Pokemon, um. So that like makes Pokes things harder. Good. Oh, it's yeah, 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 yeah. It's all good. Um, no, you're, you're good. I definitely didn't get too many spore Pokemon. So at the end of the game, I like couldn't use the Vino Shack attack or whatever it was called anymore. Um. So I had to just go to Meditate. You know, uh, Meditate City. Um, That's I awesome. only have two spores available, pretty much, and then the the shroomish, and I can evolve the shroomish, but uh, I did not find the shroomish. I only have one one brand. Uh, so the greens, I have a greens in there. I got a Moongus turn two, and never saw the greens, so I was like, all right, you know. Right. Um, I think that's time. Yeah, it did sound like time, but thank you so much, Natalie. No problem. Congrats on your round one around. win. Thanks. Thank you so much, Dadizard, for the sub Ooh, as well. Oh man, I got serious FOMO going on. Uh, Watching all this uh, you can open my packs if you want. pre-release yeah. action. Oh, you're gonna let me open them at the yeah, end? Open them at oh, the that end. would be that'd be pretty sick, for uh, for sure. Awesome stuff. Well, it appears as if everybody's having a good time, a lot of fun uh, going around. The pre-release I think caps at three rounds, so it should just be a three-round tournament that we got. That was round one that we just completed. I'm gonna go check and see how things are going out there in the lobby but we will be right back with round two of the full group games unified minds pre-release stay tight thank you guys so much for joining us on this midnight event getting ready for round two of the full group games unified minds pre-release we got brady botner on the left versus nick moses on the right Nick Moses pulled a Caldeo GX in his pre-release kit. We watched Brady build his pre-release deck earlier this evening, and uh, he did not get a GX Pokemon, unfortunately. But uh, he did use his pre-release kit to his advantage. It is going to try to use the Alolan Marowak strategy that we saw him uh, put together on camera to see if he can deal big damage. Looks like Nick does have the blue supporter. Oh, Brady 
showing off that he has got the sauce in his opening hand. He has got a turn one reset stamp to chip chip ice axe. Absolutely insane. And if Brady is going to be going first, then he will be able to limit Nick to a four card hand and choose his top deck. And it looks like Brady also has the Misty's Favor in his hand. Absolutely wild. Very, very cool starting hand here from Brady. He's really going to be getting started strong. The turn one reset stamp is insane. I mean, I, I can't say enough how wild that is going to be in pre-release format. And Chip Chip Ice Axe, not a card that we typically see. It is standard legal already. Well, let's see Brady go in for this turn one reset stamp. He's got that Metatite that uh, we had talked about. And there it goes. Limiting his opponent to just four cards on the first turn. But what Nick doesn't know is that he's about to get uh, he's about to get sauced up by this Chip Chip Ice Axe as well, which is just crazy. It looks like Nick actually drew into his own uh, Nick drew into his own reset stamp as well, which is hilarious. So we're gonna get to see these players reset stamp themselves. And Brady uses Cynthia, which is actually very fortunate for him that he did not go in with the Misty's Favor because if he had used his Misty's Favor this turn, it looks like Nick would have just shuffled that right back into, uh, into the deck with his own reset stamp. So very cool there to see. Brady's going to draw six cards here off of the Cynthia. And see what he can get. He's got a Cubone in the active, Cubone on the bench as well. Nick finds the Green's Exploration, so no problem there. Drawing out of this turn one reset stamp. And he's got a Metatite in the active position, so he's going to be dealing some damage to this Cubone. 40 damage. Spirited Headbutt, and then can retreat or evolve into a Metacham to attack next turn. Definitely a great attack for this pre-release format where, you know, quick and efficient damage is pretty hard to come by. Nick, looking through his deck, he sees the Caldeo GX. Good to know that that is not prized. Looks like he's eyeing up a potential Hapu as a supporter for the following turn. Hapu is a new supporter card from Unified Minds, which allows you to look at the top six cards of your deck. Pick two cards that you like there, put them into your hand, and discard the rest. So definitely a destructive card. Nick having a tough time choosing off this Green's Exploration here. Looks like he's eyeing up a bunch of stuff. But he's going to have to make a choice here. Uh, eventually, looks like he's eyeing up potentially a Reds and a U-Turn board. I mean, I mean, he really had or a Blue and a Hapu, a U-Turn board. Looks like he's going to go with the Blue and the U-Turn board. I think that is fine. The Blue makes it so that you end your turn uh at the end of your turn you fill your hand i believe to seven cards so not a bad supporter card kind of like the effect of tropical beach except that uh you don't get to you know enjoy playing another supporter on the same turn that you use tropical beach definitely worse than tropical beach but a similar effect nonetheless it looks like nick is considering his reset stamp now but it looks like he's just going to pass instead no fighting energy on the metatite balls in brady's court now he's got some fighting energies in his hand a metacham coming down onto the bench energy on the active cubone and that cubone is going to use an attack now i 
not exactly familiar with what the Cubone's attack is, but uh, let's let's see here if I can uh, figure it out for us. Cubone knows Growl. During your opponent's next turn, the defending Pokemon's attacks do 20 less damage. Looks like Nick has got a Tauros built up. He's going to bring up that Tauros using U-turn board to give his Meditite free retreat. And Tauros. I love the artwork on this Tauros. I think it is just phenomenal. Looks really good. It's got like lightning coming out of it. Absolutely insane card there. Tauros knows call for family. Search your deck for a basic Pokemon, put it onto your bench and shuffle your deck. I think Nick is just going to looks like he's looking for a snow rut. He's going to call for family, get a snow rut. Now let's just take a moment to just appreciate how beautiful this Tauros card is. Honestly, amazing looking card. That has got to be one of the best Tauros arts that I've ever seen. And then he used that blues Supporter to fill his hand at the end of the turn. That's how he got so much draw there Looks like Brady considering a retreat and a potential attack with the Metacham here now Not sure The Metacham does either but Here it is master strike if this Pokemon has a karate belt card attached to it, it does 60 more damage that would be 120 damage and a one-hit KO on the Tauros, leaving Nick without a lot of other options. I think that's probably what we're going to see here. That or he is, it looks like he placed, no, he went for the place four damage counters instead, which is crazy. So he knows that the Tauros is not going to be able to neutralize this Metacham. So... Brady, by placing the four damage counters on the snow run, renders the frost last pretty much useless because if the frost last wants to put damage counters on itself to deal a lot of damage, then he is not uh, going to be able to do that. He would have to like knock himself out to do that. Looks like Nick is eyeing up Brady's board here, trying to figure out a path forward. He's got a Metacham in his hand. It looks like he's going to evolve his Metatite into a well, think about evolving his Metatite into a Metacham. I don't know why he wouldn't. The Metacham seems seems good. I think you just go with that. Seems fine. And he's got some energy in his hand. Reset stamp. Really just slap one of those energies down on just about whoever. The Tauros can already attack for 60 damage. You know that. Metacham can place four damage counters with pure power, which is what we saw Brady do last turn. And then Nick benches another Snow Run. That's all he's got. And the Tauros, I believe, is going to deal something like 60 damage, is it? Tauros is going to deal a decent cliff of damage there for the two energy that are attached to it. Let's see what it does. Berserk Tackle. Berserker Tackle. Dealing 60 damage. Brady going to go in with the Metacham and just knock out the Tauros this turn with weakness. Metacham is weakened now, and it looks like Nick has got the Bug Catcher, draws two cards, flips a heads, and gets to draw two more cards. An unlikely hero of the uh, pre-release format. Consistency cards of all shapes and sizes uh, make themselves useful in pre-release decks. Looks like Nick has uh, got his Metacham in the active. Metacham versus Metacham. This Metacham is wearing a U-turn board, so it's not going to be dealing 120 damage with its Master Strike, but can deal 60, which is enough to knock out Brady's Metacham there. And you have to wonder if maybe Brady should have just gone in and knocked out the... Oh, he's going for it! Oh, it is not a Pokemon. So Brady going to load up one of his bench Pokemon while he goes for an Alolan Marowak's attack. The Alolan Marowak has a free attack that you discard the top card of your opponent's deck. And if it's a Pokemon, you deal damage equal to 
the HP of that Pokemon you discarded. So pretty crazy attack there. Let's see what uh, Nick has got in store for us. I believe this Marowak may resist fighting, so it could be a little bit of an uphill battle for Nick to fight against. Let's see if we can find the Marowak for us from this set. I think I've got it. Does resist fighting. Has 120 hit points too. That spirit smash attack could end up inflicting a lot of damage onto Nick, especially if Brady is able to find that Caldeo GX on the top of Nick's deck. Um, if Brady can find Caldeo GX, that would be pretty epic. Spirit Smash for, I believe, like 180, 170 damage, something like that. The Frostlass coming into play, though, from Nick. It's going to be able to one-hit KO this Alolan Marowak by placing six damage counters on itself. Nick going to move down to just two prizes remaining. Now this Metatite should be able to pick up a pretty swift knockout on the Frostlass since it has 60 damage on it. But it evolves into Metachamp, so it looks like Brady is going to be able to place four damage counters exactly how he wants to, and it looks like he's going to be able to take he's going to take a double knockout. That is crazy, and thank you so much, AAB22, for the sub. Thank you so much for the support, AAB. I don't know why my notifications are acting up today, but thank you so much for supporting the channel. Much appreciated. Enjoy all your new emotes. All right. So Brady only with one prize remaining. Absolutely crazy. Nick's hand is huge. Plays a Hapu. Desperately trying to find that Caldeo GX. And we see the Caldeo GX there off of the Hapu. And we'll see if he decides to choose it. Brady only has to take one more prize, but he does not have the uh, the black belt on his Metacham, so he's not going to be dealing that 120 damage that we saw him dealing earlier, unfortunately. Now... Nick uh, appears to be making a little bit of a mess of his board here. I'm not exactly sure what he's... I think he's still deciding the Hapu. All right, he's deciding which cards to keep off of the Hapu. That's, uh, that's, that's what's going on there. Had to discard an awful lot. I think, did he choose to discard the Caldeo GX? Wow. Can't say I know why that Caldeo GX had to go, but... Uh, at this point, Nick is uh, Nick is the pilot. He's got all the answers, so we'll see what he decides to do. Looks like he's only got like two cards left in deck, which is brutal. I mean, I'm not sure if Nick can win this game in two turns, and I'm almost positive. Oh, he's got a Cynthia. I spoke too soon. I was going to say, I don't know that he has a way to throw cards back into his deck. Looks like his Metacham... It's just going to deal 60 damage, and that's it. We've got a bystander reading the Stunfisk. <laughs> <laughs> Don't know who that is. We got Natalie back here. How'd your round two go, Natalie? I won. Sick! Natalie is 2-0. Awesome stuff. This game really coming down to the wire. We've got Brady attaching an energy to his benched Cubone. And will probably just deal 60 damage to this active Metachan. Nick only has one card left in deck. He can use Cynthia to throw his hand back into his deck next turn once he draws his last card in the deck, since he'll need to do that. But he keeps playing cards. Uh, I don't know about that. I want to be careful there, Nick. Not play too many cards out of that hand, since you need to Cynthia them back in. 
Looks like Nick is just going to retreat his Metacham and probably Master Strike for Knockout, going down to one prize card remaining himself. Brady has to promote a Cubone with two energy attached to it. And he's got a Misty's Favor. Search his deck for three supporter cards and put them into his hand. So all Brady has to do is not lose, but that sounds like it'll be very hard for him to do considering that this Cubone is about to take uh, maybe 60 damage from Nick's attack here. I mean, Brady can use the Growl, which decreases damage dealt to it by 20, so he would only be taking 40 damage. He actually has to Growl, so he doesn't lose, which is hilarious. So if he growls, though, then he has to find a Marowak in order to uh, evolve his Cubone so that it doesn't just get... Uh... Oh, he's got the Karate Belt. Nick found the Karate Belt. Was able to deal 120 damage with his Metacham, and that is game. Nick Moses emerging victorious with his Metacham deck over Brady's Metacham deck in round two. Of the Unified Minds pre-release. Exciting game there for sure. Really came down to the wire. We've got Natalie, another 2-0 victor go, here. I'm going to go get Nick instead. No, you oh, talk okay. to us a little bit, Natalie, right. and then we'll get, you know, we'll then get we'll Nick, Nick back yeah, okay. in a little bit. All right. So, round two, tell us about it. Played another Moongus Mirror. Okay. Yeah, classic wow. Moongus Mirror. Yeah, yeah. It was just, uh, this is like pretty much the exact same deck. Okay. Mine, but he, uh, he didn't draw too hot. Um... He like started something and like passed for a couple turns, and I just used the meta cham or the meta tight and did forty, you know, a bunch and while well, I set up. And don't the fungus um, only have forty hit points? They do. They do only have forty hit points. Oh he started my Trumish, gosh. I think. Okay. So it didn't didn't get knocked out, but he like benched a, sh uh, a fungus and promoted it, and I was able to knock that out. Um, and he didn't draw too well for a few turns. I had a dead hand, but I top decked Elm, so I was able to like Elm, and I had a bunch of evolutions in my hand, but no, no basics. I thought I was gonna get donked, but um, I ended up. Just like getting a quick, um, like a Moongus board, and I used Breloom a couple turns in a row. That was really sweet. Nice. Um, but then he put me in this weird spot where I couldn't one shot anything, um, and he had like the Metacham, and so I I ended up like just retreating into something and like passing for like a few turns while I powered up a Pokemon and I like bluesed for eight. Uh, so is then, it you filled it eight with yeah, blue? I thought it was seven. That's no, crazy. It's and I are um, I bluesed and then I just had like communication for the for the last Moongus in my deck to. To, to knock out with a Moongus. That's awesome. So. Now, I keep calling this the Blue Supporter, so what is it? What is the name Blues of it, actually? Blue Tactics? Blue oh, Tactics I'm, I'm so good. Yeah. is what it is. All right. I had forgotten that. I keep saying, he's all right, he's going to use the Blue's Clues card. The blues, yeah, Blue's <laughs> yeah. Tactics. Supporter Tropical Beach. Um, Very so cool. That was, yeah, that was cool. I have the first time using that. I've actually had to turn to a Moongus every game so far. I don't know. It's like... So then I thought my deck wasn't going to work, but insane it's deck working, yeah, insane filthy deck, filthy so, broken um, meta deck. But the right blue, there. the blue, the mid game blue was clutch. You know, I played my hand down I'm to sure. zero, and that was pretty sweet. So, um, I don't know. Yeah, I'll see what happens. Now, next do round. you have to when you uh, at the end of your turn draw a card? That's actually pretty good because you can attack while you do it too. Unlike Tropical Beach, which just ends your turn, right? Um, so you can attack on the same turn that you blues. Yeah. Oh, okay. Just, yeah. yeah. I, I always thought of it like beach, like it ends your turn, but it doesn't I end your turn. I didn't even notice that. Yeah. yeah. So you can attack on I wasn't, the turn. I didn't that, attack that turn, but, you know, yeah. You ended up winning <laughs> <Yeah>. anyway. <laughs> you can totally attack on the turn that yeah. you lose. That's crazy. So you just uh, you can go in, attack for a lot of damage, fill your hand to eight, too. Yeah. Filthy, filthy Pretty card. card. Excellent stuff. All right. I'll go get Nick. I'm going to see who else is doing well here. We're going to be right back at the uh, pre-release. Take a minute to scope out the lobby. Be right back. So, Nick, tell us a little bit about your deck. What Pokemon you got in it? Um, I saw Metacham and Frostless lines and, and you know, a couple of things like Tauros and Audino with the little, you know, miniature skateboard. Um, so, you know, the U-turn board. Yeah. Yeah. So, put the Audino free draw every turn. But, um, anyway. Insane. It was that, the Frostless and Metacham, and nothing else. I'm just like, all right, these draw supporters, energies. <laughs> Nothing yeah, else. You got together. a Caldeo GX in your deck. Oh, yeah, that too. Yeah, yeah. it's pretty good. I yeah. mean, he does like 110 damage or something, right? Yeah. So he's pretty sweet. Now, uh, what did you play against round one? 
Uh, it was a guy who was new. He didn't. He hadn't played since he was a kid. So I didn't, you know, put too much weight into that. But uh, to you know what he played. Um, but he did have a Rowlet executor. Is it? Wow. Okay. So you were able to take yeah. down a tag team Pokemon. Yeah. Like he wasn't drawing energy, so I just uh, kept like poke, okay. poke, 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 poke. Eventually, it's yeah. gonna go down. and You take yeah. three prizes. So that's pretty good. Now, have you uh, taken any time to look at the new set yet? Uh, I know I want to play. Eh, I've looked at a lot of things, but sure. uh, not every single card. So, um, what are you most excited about from Unified Minds? Uh, whatever helps me play Malamar. So yes, well, I think um, there are some uh, yeah, friends for your Malamar yeah. deck in the set. So yeah, no worries uh, there. So Mew Mew, um, maybe Espeon Deoxys, uh, Garchomp Giratina. Yeah, yeah, go, no, Garchomp Giratina. Yeah. Um, Maybe I mean, those two, three probably, are Yeah, those easy. three. Uh, and then, like, I have all the Pikram stuff, and yeah. you know, Jesse keeps telling me, you should play Pikram, you should play Pikram, which, I mean, honestly, was, you know, yeah. It's a pretty good deck, yeah. Yeah, only a little bit good. But Malamar's um, also really good. So yeah. that is uh, for sure, uh, if you're into, if you got Malamar stuff and you got Pikram stuff, you're in a good spot yeah, need to, heading need, into the next need season. some choo-choos. For sure, yes. That is the card that I have my eye on. It's my favorite card in the set already. Just Isn't it Just because I could call it Choo Choo. The Choo Choo Train. Yeah. woo -hoo. Yes, definitely stoked on that. Well, anyways, Nick, thank you so much for joining us. Good luck yeah. in your final round. Thanks. Third and final round of the Full Group Games Unified Minds pre-release. We've got Christian Johnson on the right versus Rob Stevens with Child on the left. Rob Stevens actually playing with his baby on board. He's got one of those little front packs and his little baby child in his uh, front pack there, carrying it like a kangaroo. You can't see it now, but it is very cute and has been the talk of the tournament for sure. Christian rocking those Alolan Marowak and hiker sleeves. Maybe we'll see Christian employing a strategy utilizing Alolan Marowak and hiker. And uh, very funny to see those two cards paired together considering that those cards do actually go well together in this tournament considering that you can stack your opponent's deck with Hiker and then a little Marowak for big knockouts which would be really sick to see hopefully we can see one of these players pull off a crazy combo like that it's been an exciting tournament so far we've seen Lucario's going at it with black belts. We've heard stories of Amoongus. We haven't seen any crazy Amoongus decks yet, but we've heard some pretty wild Amoongus stories uh, as well. Spore decks, poisoning, and putting Pokemon to sleep, which I'm sure are pretty funny to witness. Natalie has played a couple of Spore Amoongus mirrors so far so anxious to see what these players have in store for us in this final round for sure uh, Rob Stevens is a local player who is uh, has been on the tournament circuit up here in Northeast Ohio for a while and uh, even occasionally writes some articles on the Pokemon trading card game he is Known for his Pokemon puzzles, which have been pretty fun. If you've been able to see any of those, he posts them on to Facebook, like Hey Fonte and Verbank groups. All right, Rob appears to have, I think, Zerkatries. Is that two Zerkatry? What in the world? And Christian starting with a Shroomish. But Rob's double Zerkatry, and it looks like he has got a turn one elms lecture for two fungus and another pokemon there absolutely insane what a start from rob i gotta say this is an explosive beginning here from this pre-release deck not what i would have expected for sure he's got a fungus on the bench a snow runt as well he's saving the other fungus in his hand presumably so that when he evolves into Amoongus he can trigger Amoongus's ability 
with the spore attack on Fungus. These Zerkatry are absolutely huge basic Pokemon here. And it looks like Christian uh, going to end his turn, refilling his hands with Blue's Tactics. Rob has a turn two Frostlass. Zerkatry in the active. He's got the Amoongus as well. And the Fungus to boot. This is an explosive start here from Rob. If Rob wins, we're going to get to hopefully see that, uh, that baby back on camera. That would be uh, amazing for sure. It looks like he has got Blue's tactics as well and is going to put the defending Pokemon asleep and poison it with the effect of Fungus there and then end his turn. Now I am curious if players know they can attack when they end their turns with Blue's tactics. I I suspect that they don't know this because I don't think Christian attacked either and Natalie said she didn't know it either. But you can definitely attack when you end your turn with Blue's Tactics. So I'm interested to see if that is something that uh, players are aware of. I'm going to ask Rob when, you know, if he gets back here uh, at the end of the match what he thinks. Now Christian gets a huge draw here. He's actually got his own Metacham on the bench wearing a black belt. So he has got some, definitely got some stuff going on on his side of the field. Not to be underestimated, that Metacham's Master Strike attack does 60 plus 60 more when it is wearing that karate belt. And Christian's going to copy Stevens, uh, Rob Stevens' Blues Tactics draw for eight here. Looks like his Shroomish is lying asleep there in the active position and is going to take 10 more damage from Poison this turn. So it's probably going to go down. I think Rob probably going to get an attack going with his Zerkatry here with a Lightning Energy and then the 30 damage from Zerkatry's attack combined with the poison i believe shroomish only has 60 hit points i don't actually know got the bug catcher flip coin it's heads we draw two more cards so a net draw of four there for rob this turn really explosive draw with the blues and then he'll attack with the zerkatry see if the shroomish hangs on or if it ends up getting KO'd by poison, it does have 60 hit points, so it ends up getting KO'd by poison. Now, Christian, all he needs is a fighting energy, and this Zerkatry will go down. But what's crazy is that uh, I think that the Zerkatry gets powered up if you're on your three prize turn. Something like that. I'm going to have to take a look at the card and actually see. But could be time for Rob to go in with his Zerkatry, right? Dealing 120 damage. If Christian takes this knockout, then Rob can just promote his Zerkatry and deal 120 damage with the three mirrors attack, which is absolutely huge in this pre-release format. Rob has got the energy he needs. He's going to be able to take this knockout on the opposing Metacham. No problem. And he has an Amoongus on his bench ready to go. He's going to be able to take a huge knockout with this Frostlass as well. Frostlass maxes out at like 140 damage. So, 140 damage potential from that frost last on the bench. Amoongus suited up and ready to go with two energies as well. Rob definitely in a commanding position, wiping Christian's board down to zero energy. And Rob has got more cards in his hand than he does in his deck, that's for sure. His draw power has been nothing short of uh, nothing short of phenomenal. Do you see that Christian does have the Amoongus in play and is going to use Pokemon Communication to trade a Pokemon from his hand into the deck. See if maybe he can find 
a fungus and put this zirkatry to sleep. And he does find the fungus. He's going to leave that zirkatry uh, sleep, presumably, by putting that fungus onto the bench. See how that works out for him here. Rob will get a turn to wake up. It is poison, though, so it's going to start to tick away at that Zerkatree's HP. And the Metatite actually dealing 80 damage with this attack here because of Zerkatree's weakness. Rob gets a chance to wake up, and he does. Absolutely crazy. Rob just has everything in the world going right for him this game. He gets to use three mirrors again for another attack to deal 120 damage. I think if Rob just puts a water energy onto this frost last, it's pretty much going to be game over here. But uh, I guess the Amoongus can deal a pretty insane amount of damage too if Rob does have another Fungus in his hand, which he does. So he's going to be able to go out in style next turn unless Christian has some way to disrupt his hand. Rob is going to be able to use that Amoongus's attack to deal huge damage. Natalie's back. How'd you do, Natalie? Oh, I got owned. Oh, no. That's okay. I'm sorry to hear it. Um, my opponent was playing the Marowak, the Spirit Smash deck. Oh, yeah? Uh, he Spirit Smashed me twice in a row of my only two Pokemon in a 40, like a 30-card deck that oh, had 120 my. HP and, and knocked me out both two turns in a row. And it looks like... Rob has got the win here. Christian go. going to scoop it up. Rob proceeding to 3-0 at the Unified Minds pre-release. See if we can get uh, I'll go grab him. Rob back here for an interview and tell him to bring that cute baby oh, too. He's got the baby. Let's he's go. Not him. Let's go. All right. We're going to be right back with Rob and baby. We've got Rob. What's and up? baby Brooke. Rook. Rook. With an R. With an R. Baby Rook. Oh, and Rook is six months old? Six months. Oh my gosh. So cute. My Rook. good luck charm here. You are quite the dad. And getting them started early. Yeah, man. Showing them how it's done. 3 0 at the Unified Minds pre release, right? There we go. Yeah. Excellent stuff. We saw your deck was fire. Yeah. Tell, Two, us, <laughs> tell us a little bit about it. Two Zerkatries. So I just got super lucky, pulled those off the packs. Um, every single time my opponent went down to three prizes, that's a knockout automatically, and if they don't have an answer to it. Uh, on top of that, Frostlass was always waiting for me. and then Right. Um, and then that game and several others, I had Elms in order to get the um, Funguses out to right. Poison. So it just it just kind of rode through people if they didn't have an answer to Zerkatry. That was a gnarly deck to watch. The double Zerkatry start was insane. Yeah. You're like, okay. Can put pressure on with one Zerkatree. As soon as they knock it out, I got a 120 hit point Pokemon yeah. who's doing 120 damage every turn until they take another knockout. Yeah. Frostlass can deal 140 damage. The sleep on top of it, that was like icing. You didn't even need that. No, that was like icing on the it, cake. It did help. In I'm a sure. Of, one of my matches, the sleep won me the game. So oh, that's just crazy. To, just to have them sleep for miss a knockout. Now, I was talking to Natalie about this. Uh, did you know that you can attack on turns that you end with blue? I did. Okay, because yes. some people, I've said, because I don't think you're, I don't know if your opponent, Christian, attacked. Um, he did. He took a prize and then got to eight. Oh, okay, um, okay, okay. So your I've, prize counts towards the eight cards, though. Oh, uh, okay, okay, yeah. okay. Because I, I was thinking that some players, like, you know, I, myself included, I uh, thought it was like Tropical Beach, where you just, right, like, end right. your turn, you know, fill your hand. But no, no it's, it's just better when you're, than Tropical Beach. It's, like, better. The draw is better. It's filled to eight, and yeah. you could attack. So. Yeah, I got super lucky. I pulled three of those. So what? I was... I was Flying through my deck, getting everything I needed. Oh it was my gosh! A dream pre-release deck for sure. Yeah. And without any GX Pokemon, right? No GX Pokemon. But like all the supporters you could want, double Zerkatry is definitely a great, uh, a great pre-release deck. Now, is there any cards that you're excited from? From excited for from Unified Minds? Yeah, I'm really excited for Naganadel GX. Oh yeah. Um, it's got the. It's kind of like trade, but you'll trade Ultra Beast yep. for three. I'm not sure how good it is. Been testing kind of like a beast box deal. Um, excited about that. I'm excited about the rotated cards more than I am about the new cards. <laughs> yes. So excited to see some cards. Yeah, for sure. Kind of call it quits. Yep, they're out of here. Yeah. Yes. Guzma let loose. 
Guzma gone. let loose, goodbye. Uh, Double goodbye. colorless while we're at it. Yeah, and Zorak. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Deuces. Goodbye. Yeah, I'm not going to miss sure. them. But uh, that is cool. Uh, I think that there's going to be a lot of new decks come out of this format, so I'm excited sure. to see how those do. And, uh, yeah, man, congrats to you. Thanks. Congrats on your uh, baby there as yeah, well, baby out. Rook. I don't know if you know that. Super I, uh, cute. Thank you for the map. Uh, yes, winner. excellent. There you go. The <laughs> winner we can win. Dragon Ball Z, man. Hey, I was, so, I was pumped. Hey, that's awesome. Well, thanks for joining us, Rob, yeah, and congrats again. Hopefully you get some uh, good luck in your final polls. Appreciate it.